let's learn how to prompt the user to enter in how many objects to make in an array. Now remember uh, what we're working with is the Visual Studio C Sharp console application. So we'll say a file new project, Visual C Sharp console, and let's call this one R Fun because everything's fun when working with C Sharp. Okay, and we'll create our project. It will go out there and create the solution and the project. And here's our main program that we have. And we want to create a brand new class to represent cars, an automobile. And so uh, the way we could do it, we could just type it in right to this one. But the right thing to do is to create a brand new file. So we go to Car Fun, the project, right click, add class. And then you're going to give it the name of the class you want to make. We want to make a car class. You can say car or car.cs. It will add the CS for you. Make a brand new class for you. Now you have to go ahead and start making uh, that class, or in other words, building what attributes you might want to have to represent different cars. And so you got to ask yourself, what would make one car different from another car? Well, if you think about maybe buying a car on ksl.com, if you go to their classifieds, and you could actually look at cars, and you can do a search on the cars to buy a car, then you could look at different descriptors that you might have for each car. In other words, some of the different titles or attributes they have would be the make of a car, and the make of a car are things like an Acura, a Honda, Toyota, Ford, things like that. So that's a string. So we'll say string make. Another thing that you might have is maybe you have the model associated with it. That's a string. We'll say model mileage. Int mileage. That describes a car. Uh, the year. That's probably also an int year. And what about a price? Let's do double price. So those are cars that we want to sell. So these instance variables are just like variables, but they belong to the class. They will describe the object, the car, when we actually make the car in our source code. And you make the car by saying new, the name of the class, parenthesis, parenthesis. So let's come back over to our program now that we have the car attributes in place. Oh, one other thing we want to do in those attributes, we want them to be seen by everybody. So I'm going to go add the word public to each one of those attributes. That access modifier says that the instance variable, whichever one they are, that you want to work with, is visible throughout this class and any other classes associated with the program. So when I come back over to here, file called program.ts, I will be able to access those instance variables if I have an object created from that class. Well, let's go ahead and define an array that we want to work with. And it's going to be of type car. So you say the name of the class, square bracket, square bracket. You can give it a name. We'll call it AO cars. But we don't know what size it is yet. So we'll just define it. Now let's go ahead and grab uh, a variable, create a variable called iSize, and we want to prompt the user to enter in how many cars. So we prompt them, and then we say iSize equals to console.readline, but remember we're going to be working with an int, so we have to come back over to here to the console and say convert to int 32, and we're going to convert the actual data that we're going to work with. Don't forget to put the word 2, or the period, right before the 2, int 32. This grabs the string, converts it to a number, stores it to that variable. Now that we have how many cars they want to work with, let's do the following. I want to say the word if. I size is greater than zero, because I don't want to do any of this if they didn't enter in a number that's greater than zero. Now that they, they did that, I can say AO cars, which is my array, 
is equal to new car bracket i size. This will now use whatever number they typed in from the keyboard and go create an array that will hold car objects and stick it into the variable called AO cars that we defined up top. This defines the array, but it doesn't size it. This now sizes the array. Now that the array is sized, now let's go ahead and load up all the data inside that array. For int i count equals zero. And as long as i count is less than the array dot length, we want to stay in this loop. We'll increment i count. And in this loop, we want to load up the array. So we'll say console.write line. Enter the car make. And we will go grab that from the data. But remember, I want to store that inside the array. And I could say AO cars bracket I count dot make equal to and then whatever they type in from the keyboard. Read line. And let's just run this and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and add, outside of this if statement, I'm going to add a console.readLine to pause the screen, although it's not going to matter. And let's see what happens when we try to run that program. So once again, we prompt for how many they want to do. If it's greater than zero, we'll create the array of that size, and then we'll use this for loop to go load up all the makes for each object stored in the array. Let's see if we're missing a step though. Let's go ahead and run it, and it should prompt us, say how many cars? We'll say three. Enter. What's the car make? Honda. Enter. It just blew up. And it says null reference exception. Object reference not set to an instance of the object. Memorize this error, because when you first start working with objects, you'll see it a lot. And what it's telling you is that you're trying to access something within an object. And we are. We're accessing an attribute in the object of the array. But there's no object created yet. But didn't I create the object right there? No. All that does is creates the array. But there's no objects inside of it yet. So you are responsible to come in here and say AO cars bracket I count equal to new car parenthesis parenthesis. That line makes the object. Now that the object is inside of AO cars, now you can actually start to work with it. Now the problem we have here is we said I count within our for loop. And that should be just fine. So let's go ahead and try something. Let's do a build and let's do a clean and see what happens. It says it succeeded. And for some reason, we still have an error. And that's because we wiped out the curly brace for the for loop. So for our curly brace back in, you probably didn't see that error. That's a great example, though, of mistakes you can make. That curly brace is gone. That doesn't exist anymore. Because remember, one statement lives with a for loop. And so once that statement executes, it's over. That variable, which was declared right there in the for loop, doesn't exist. So make sure you have your curly brace there. Now it's alive. This will now allow us to load up objects inside of the array. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the screen. And I'll add some more code and explain it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've typed in. We already saw that we created the array before. Then we made a new object, put it into position 0 of the array, because that's what I count is the first time. Then we loaded up the make for that object in position 0, the model for that object in position 0, the mileage, which we converted to int, for that object in position 0, the year, year, which we converted to an int for position 0, and the price, which we converted to double. So by the time that I'm done with this for loop, I will have created an array of car objects and loaded up all the data. Let's go ahead and do a console.readLine, pause the screen, 
and I'm going to set a breakpoint by clicking on line 43. I'm going to run the program, and let's see if it prompts us to load up three cars. Car make, Honda, Civic, mileage, 50,000, year, 2010, the car price, 12,000, the car make, Toyota, Camry, 100,000, the year, 2005, the price, 5,000, the car make, Ford, Escape, Ford Escape, mileage, 25,000, the year, 2015, price, 15, Thousand. Now let's take a look at our array. I'm going to put my cursor on AO cars. And I'm going to click the little arrow and it says in element zero you've got a car object with all of that data associated with it. Element one, a car object with all of that data associated with it. Element two, a car object with all of that data associated with it. So this is a way you can create an array Ask the user how big the array should be, size the array, and then go load up that array by creating a new object for each position and then loading up the instance variables for it. The thing I really like about object-oriented programming is imagine looking at this variable, one variable, and having to store all of that information with a whole bunch of different variables using objects is so much more easier and cleaner to work with. That's how you prompt the user for the size of an array of objects.